I'm here at the Blister Summit with Chris McKenna from Marker, and today we're going to talk about a few new bindings you guys have going on, a few tweaks to existing series. Uh, where do you want to start? Uh, yeah, well, first just want to say thank you, Luke, for having us out to Chris Butte for the week. Been phenomenal. We had some great powder skiing in and uh, ski with all the testers. But yeah, jumping into Marker here, we have really exciting additions to the touring lineup for next year. So quick overview, it's just going to be a fully revamped Duke PT collection and then a brand new binding in our full pin category with the Cruise. So I guess first we'll jump probably into the Cruise. Which sounds good to me. Uh, so right here, brand new for next year is, uh, is our Cruise binding. So quick overview on it and then I'll kind of get into the nitty gritty details. Uh, so coming in full pin binding, coming in two options, so 4 to 10 din range and 6 to 12. Uh, another aspect is has our easy step toe, uh, so same toe from our Alpinist and Kingman bindings uh, with that rubber bump stop there to help guide your foot into place, uh, just making it really easy to engage the pins. Um, then coming with comes pre-installed with a brake on it, so two brake width options at 90 millimeters and 105. Uh, then also has a longer heel track in the back, so 25 millimeters uh, range there, so plus or minus 12 and a half. So giving you enough room to accommodate two different boot soles, which is definitely a nice aspect in the touring world where sometimes your true lightweight boots have a one millimeter, or one size smaller in terms of millimeter boot sole length. Mm -hmm. um, but really the key story here for us on cruise is it's just incredibly simple to use. So way more user friendly than our Alpinist series that we have, which are currently our full pin binding. Uh, so four unique aspects on it that just make it overall easier to use. So first one being the climbing aids on it. Um, so you, you get three different modes for hiking. So first one here is neutral and then first climbing aid there, eight degrees, second one, 12 degrees, but Super easy to engage with your poles there. So that's a major upgrade from our Alpinist. And then also really nice that you get all three modes without having to readjust the heel piece at all while touring. Uh, so super nice, just reach back uh, and switch modes with your pole. Also making it a little simpler too, just color coding the climbing aids mm -hmm. there. Um, and then second component on just making it simpler to use is the brake engagement. So to switch from climbing mode here to back to Alpine is just rotate the heel housing down and disengages the brake there. And then vice versa to go into climb mode, just flip the brake 180 degrees, step down and you're locked out. Uh, so that really nice, making it easier as transition from uh, climbing to ski mode without taking your skis off there when all you have to do is just adjust the uh, heel housing. And then third component uh, is just going to be the adjustability of the binding. So you can notice full pin binding here, you get adjustment on both vertical and lateral release settings. So with our Alpinist binding, you have adjustable lateral release, but the vertical is fixed with a soft, medium, or firm UBO, depending if you're the uh, 8, 10, or 12 version. On here, though, that uh, back pins are in bearing, so you do have that vertical adjustment. So just making it simpler to be safe in the binding. Gotcha. Um, and lastly, just uh, continuing with the pins, fourth component, making it easier is it's just 30% easier step in on the cruise than our Alpinist. Um, gotcha. So really nice if you're um, uh, up top in soft snow trying to get into the binding. Hmm. So in terms of uh, the different demographics for the bindings, who do you think is going to be best suited with uh, the cruise versus an Alpinist or vice versa? Uh, so I think that cruise as it being more user friendly, somebody that's just getting into the backcountry but wants to take advantage of a full pin binding, but isn't completely weight obsessed. So the cruise is going to be heavier than our Alpinist. So it comes in at 480 grams versus the Alpinist is 270 without the break. So obviously a big chunk of that differential is the break, which weighs about 90 grams. Uh, the additional weight is then just going to be a little heavier housing in the cruise binding. Um, and then Alpinist is for that like true hardcore backcountry skier that really is counting grams and the slightly uh, 
not more difficult to use, but uh, less settings on the binding they're not as concerned with. Gotcha. Yeah, so for the people who aren't, aren't really prioritizing like two climbing or really high climbing aids, ease of use, are willing to save some grams to and are fine with losing those features, that sort of person. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So somebody that uh, is, doesn't want to have a break on their binding, trying to save the weight, is happy. So that Alpinist does have two climbing modes, but to use the middle one, you have to rotate the binding back around. So in reality, most people use it with just the neutral or the nine degree uh, climbing mode, but. Gotcha. And then, uh, so you guys now have a touring binding lineup that spans I mean, just about every category there is. Yeah. Do you want to move on to kind of the opposite end of the touring category? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, one more thing I'll just jump into before mm -hmm. we move on to, it's just the sustainability component mm -hmm. here on the cruise. Um, so the housing on the tow piece is a mix of carbon fiber and then bio-based plastics. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the heel plate and the climbing aids are from recycled plastic. And then the rest of the heel housing and then the uh, break here is bio-based plastic. Hmm. So gonna be our most sustainable binding here. And I think kind of goes along with the target group of the skier for the cruise, somebody in the backcountry is gonna be environmentally conscious too, I think. So a really nice binding for that component. Gotcha. And I think just finishing off on it being easier to use, I think is super nice on a backcountry binding. As we all know, when, when you're at the top and it's windy, it's snowing, it can just be incredibly frustrating if you can't get into your binding uh, or if you're kind of maxed out hiking and you're struggling to get the climbing gauge, uh, climbing gates engaged. So this definitely being easier to use is a huge upgrade for us. Gotcha. Uh, do you want to talk about all these Duke PTs now? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So uh, Duke PT is definitely, I'd say, one of our most exciting bindings and technologically advanced bindings in the lineup that we launched a couple years ago. Uh, and now for next year, we have kind of completely revamped the collection. So from a technical standpoint, all the same, but now we have three options. So historically, we've had a Duke PT-12 and a 16. Now it's lining up with the rest of our royal family bindings. So we have uh, pure Alpine bindings. We have a Squire 11, Griffin 13, and Jester 16. And so now we're bringing that DIN range into the Duke family. So you'll have brand new for next year, Duke PT-11. Uh, which then has the same technology as our Squire, so the hollow, uh, hollow linkage heel. Mm -hmm. And then brand new as well as Duke PT-13. Uh, so same technology as our Griffin with a full inner pivot heel, but uh, fiberglass housing. And then Duke PT-16 stays the same in terms of tech, so it has your magnesium housing, a little more burly than the 13, uh, but also new there is the two color options. Gotcha. Um, in turn, so when when it was just the Duke PT twelve and sixteen, the twelve was a fair bit lighter than the sixteen. How do how do the weight differences play out now between the three models? Yep. Uh, so when we talk weight with the Duke, we talk like climbing and non climbing. So that's in reference to having the toe piece on or off. So the toe itself is three hundred grams. So if you take that off and put it in your pack, it's just a more efficient area to carry the weight. So the Duke PT-11 here is 850 grams without the toe on, and then 1150 with a toe piece on, and then jumping up to 1,000 grams on the 13, 1,300 toe piece on, and then the 16 is 50 grams heavier than the 13. That's just the difference from the fiberglass to magnesium housing. Got it. And in terms of functionality, the bindings are, are quite quite similar, but just kind of now line up with your Alpine bindings. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, so we're talking gear, whether it's boots or bindings or skis, a lot of times like we focus on that highest price point or highest flex item. Uh, but in bindings, like having a load in range setting is super important for that lighter weight skier or that junior skier. So bringing the Duke PT-11 all the way down to a three DIN is a really nice uh, advancement there. Mm -hmm. And for, for people who aren't I mean, there's probably not a lot out, a lot out there, but people who aren't familiar with the Duke PT uh, collection, maybe just give us the elevator pitch on what they're supposed to do and how they differ from markers, uh, touring and alpine bindings. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Duke, the story on Duke PT is all about when 
alpine mode, there's no sacrifices in your skiing. And then you also get the advantage of a pins when you're climbing. So transition from ski mode here to climbing, pop that lever down and you either can clip the toe piece in there if you're going on a shorter hike and you don't want to deal with taking it off, but you also can pop the toe piece off, throw it in your pack, save some weight. And I think like the biggest jump when we're talking efficiencies and bindings in touring, obviously weight's super important, but I think the biggest steps going from a frame binding to a pin tech binding, just getting that mechanical efficiency in there. Uh, so that's hugely important for the uphill mode here. And then uh, the other component of the climbing with the Duke PT is just the brake engagement. So you just roll up the roll bar there when you step down. It's going to lock the brake in. And then here with this up is actually neutral because the pins here are elevated themselves. And then you get the climbing bar here to pop that up. And then just transitioning back out of ski uh, pike mode. Flip that down, roll that forward, brakes re-engaged. And then you can just pop the toe back on here. Um, so it takes a little bit of transition, but you get the benefit of a full alpine binding uh, when you're uh, in downhill mode. So you have the full hollow linkage heel on the Squire, and then you get the advantage of the inner pivot heel on the 13 and 16 options. Gotcha. We've got four Duke PTs here, but one of them is just available in two colors. Could you tell us the backstory on that? Yeah, yeah. so for next year with Marker, uh, having multiple color options has been a big focus of us. And a lot of that has been working with our partner ski brands. So whether that's K2, Line, Vocal, Nordica, Blizzard. So giving binding uh, colors that line up with those model skis. So you see here in the Duke PT-16, there's two graphics there with the tan and the green version. Uh, and that story continues throughout our Royal Family collection. So with our Squires, you'll see a lot of new colors for next year in the Griffin series as well. And then the Jester 16 gets, is now, instead of just one color that we've historically had, you get three new colors there. Well, cool. Thank you so much for uh, running us through all these products and coming out to Crested Butte so we can try them in person. We appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Luke. Thanks so much for having us. Mm -hmm.